Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Fine Gaming Connoisseur. And welcome back to another video of Let's Play Once More Line 2 Beta. Okay, and uh, today we have another new patch, version 0.1.2.7. Now, this is the, the follow up hotfix 0.1.2.11. However, the major patch is, of course, 0.1.2.7. And so this patch introduces a lot of things, um, chiefly among those, the auction house or the trade broker, and also a new lockout system. I think there's a few other, quite a, quite a number of other things. So, so if you want to take a look, there is a link in the description below that will take you to the patch notes on Steam. So today I'm transporting my entire supply of Kubrum. I'm transporting it from Maduli to Fabernum. And so of course this patch also introduces a number of new creatures. So hopefully I'll get to show you that on the way. Now. Now that I'm on a mount, it shouldn't take too long to get to Maduli. So we'll, I think it will still take some time, but uh, it won't be as long as if you were on foot. So, so that's so we'll try and we'll try and get there. And so we we do have uh, cougars and dire wolves now, as well as satyrs. So hopefully I'll be able to show you dire wolves and cougars, and of course I have to avoid any confrontations, encounters, and whatnot with other players. See, when I'm transporting, I, I tend to avoid. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. So this horse doesn't have infinite stamina, unlike unlike some of the horses that I've had before in Mortal Kombat One. <laughs> All right, so that's like we can. All right, so this horse still has a. Uh... All right, so we'll, we'll let him rest for a little bit. So I'm doing this um, this video as a game guide again, and I, I was debating whether to do it as a you know my regular let's play video, or or you know make it a game guide. But you know I decided to make it a game guide because uh, I do think that you know transporting things is an art unto itself. Thankfully, I'm on a mount, so. Uh, you know, I, th I don't think it will take too long. So my voice is getting better now, so... Um, so yeah, it, it won't be, uh, <laughs> it won't be croaky like last time. And... So while I'm transporting my Kubram, I also just want to talk about the new logout system. So this is another controversial uh, I wouldn't say controversial, but I would say divisive issue. Another divisive uh, feature that's been introduced. So basically now the way it works is if you're in town, then the logout is, I think, five seconds and you will log out and your pet will log out with you. And there's my spear. <laughs> However, if you are in the wild, like I am now, then you will take 30 minutes. It will take, I think, 30 seconds for you to disconnect, for you to actually log out. However, once you log out, your character and your pets will remain in the game for 30 minutes. So, and so that is a quite a controversial change to the logout system. And if you disconnect for whatever reason, 
your character and your pets will remain in the game for three hours. Doesn't matter where you are. Oh, there's a cougar. <laughs> the other come up to me. There you go. Can you see it? <laughs> so there's a cougar. So yeah, you do not want to run into those. And you do not want to run into die wolves. They will absolutely uh, smash you <laughs> in no time. Oh, and there's uh, some sort of a ruins over there. Can you see that? I might, I might actually just... I might actually go down and have a look. However, this is uh, yeah. So it is a quite a controversial change for many, for, for you know, a lot of people. Um, some people think it's a good idea, while other people think it's a terrible idea. And what? What, the, what is this? <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, <laughs> I think it's a graphical glitch. All right, so I've got it on video. So SV, please <laughs> have a look into it if you're watching this. And so some people have said that it's a good idea because it uh, it discourages you know a um, bunch of reds who go up and you know gank miners and then they just log out. So that no, no, you know, no response can be shown uh, by the miners' friends and allies. You know, so that the miners' uh, friends and allies can't, you know, can't really respond. Which I can understand. You know, even though I've not really been a target of that in the wild. You know, most of the time, you know, when I'm mining, I'm very, very cautious and very, very uh, vigilant. So I've never really been attacked while I'm mining or woodcutting as such, but I can definitely see the, you know, the uh, the reasoning behind that because I think that's what plagued the first game a lot. You know, the first game really had that problem where, you know, a bunch of res just come up and, you know, gank, uh, you know, naked miners or woodcutters and, and then log out. Okay, so this is a new, it's a new, um, interesting site. It's a, I think it's a ruins. So I don't, know, I don't know what what is here, but there could be something. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely Chindromic ruins. Oh, there's a cougar. <laughs> Got to have eagle eyes in this game, like I've mentioned several times before. You really got to watch, keep an eye on every single thing. <laughs> So, you know, this game guide will hopefully show you um, some of the tips and tricks of, you know, traveling, especially when you're hauling stuff on a mount. And this is my first time, you know, hauling things in this Mortimer Line 2. You know, I've done, I've done it a lot of times in Mortimer Line 1, you know, whether for myself or for friends, you know, sometimes, you know, friends or strangers will, you know, uh, they will pay me some money and then they just ask me to haul their goods across you know to another town so you know i think this is one reason why i really think that um, local banking is so important because if you didn't have that none of this would exist you know this whole transporting and you know people uh, cooperating and offering their services it simply wouldn't exist you know, if it wasn't for local banking. So I'm glad that uh, SV made this game to be local banking and not global banking. So always keep an eye on this, you know, your widest uh, field of view. Always turn around every you know, few seconds just to make sure that no one is um, coming up behind you. And
and make sure you keep an eye on your horse's stamina because if your horse runs out of stamina then uh, you'll come to a complete stop and you know you'll be in trouble okay so i think that's the spring box So the reason why I'm taking this route, rather than going from Tindrum to uh, to Fabernum, from you know going from uh, Maduli to Tindrum and then from Tindrum to Fabernum, is because um, you know you do have to cross the woods if you were to go through that go that direction. But if you took this route, then you're more or less out in the open and horses. Uh, you know, they work best when they're in the open. They do not work very well when you go into, you know, um, wooded places like a forest or, you know. And if you're going to stop at all, then, you know, do find a empty, you know, sort of like a isolated area to, to rest your mount. And even when you're resting, remain 100% vigilant. Do not, you know, let your guard down at, you know, for any reason. And if you can, try and stay on the high ground so that you can have a greater view of what is out there. As opposed to if you're on the low ground, then you are at a disadvantage because, uh, you know, other players can simply, you know, they, they can have a greater view. They can spot you much easier, but you won't be able to spot them as easily. So if you can try and go on the high ground. However, there is also a disadvantage of being on the high ground in that your horse is not uh, that good at navigating sloped elevations such as uphill or you know downhill uphill your your horse will slow down and downhill your horse will you know accelerate and you know it might make it a little bit more difficult to control so we haven't seen dire wolves yet but you know we could come across them at some point because I, I know that in Mortal Online 1 you know, that you, you find them more or less around here, along with cougars and uh, bandits. So, now I don't know whether bandits have been brought back. So I do know that a few patches ago, they were, I think, accidentally removed or something. I can't remember, but <laughs> this is still beta. So, you know, things can still go wrong and... So I think once we cross this big mountain range, then uh, we will be. Yeah, <laughs> so the regular uh, trot is. I don't know what we call it, is. Uh, the regular sprint for the horse is. Isn't, isn't really that fast, but. You know, <laughs> it's better than you running on a on foot. That's for sure. But man, I do. I gotta say, the landscape looks really, really good, even at night. I mean, this is really, really good. The graphics are top notch, and you know, and I love that it, it is six times larger. I mean, this is now you can really say that this is a continent. <laughs> Not like the first game where, you know, it, it sort of, it was made to look bigger than it is. Now this game, uh, Mortal Online 2, can now take the title of being a massive world. And this is what I've always wanted, so... So this is a visual treat for me. <laughs> I 
All right, so I'm carrying 300 units of cuprum. I think it's 315 or something of cuprum. <laughs> okay, so there is a um, slight graphical anomaly there. I think if you can see, there's a bit of a blur blurring effect. I don't know whether that's intended or whether it's a bug. Okay, so we should more or less be almost there. But yeah, this is definitely a much bigger world and <laughs> we haven't even reached the sausage lake yet, you know. So this lake should be somewhere over to that side, a bit further away. But yeah, it helps if you have knowledge of the world of Mortal Line 1. Okay, so... So now back to what I was talking about, the, uh, the logout timer, you know, if you disconnect for whatever reason, then it's a three hour, it would be three hours before your character and your pets disappear from the game world. Now, now that is if you disconnect from the game without logging out. So I think, I think it is to discourage people who, um, who abuse the logout system, like when they're in a dungeon, you know, they could just, you know, tab out of the game and then just, uh, you know, disconnect from their internet connection and then, you know, or when they're losing a battle, you know, a PvP battle, then they just log out or, I mean, they just um, pull the plug and, <laughs> you know, I do know that some people could, you know, I think some people might do that, you know, if they, if they really if they really want to, you know, abuse the logout system, I think that's something that they can do. So I think this change is to combat that sort of thing. And I think that's why uh, it is a controversial thing for some people. Now, me, me personally, I do think that there needs to be something to combat this sort of abuse of logout system and, um, you know, just logging in and then gather a group of reds and then go and gank a whole bunch of miners out in the wild and then just log out before anyone can respond. And I think that's some, that's a problem that existed in the first game. So, so me personally, I think this change is a, it, you know, it could be a little bit heavy handed, but I can definitely see the rationale behind it. Oh. <laughs> Right, time for a break. Yeah, so this is. So I hope you can see why, you know, nighttime is the best time to travel. Because it, you, you really do hide your. I mean, if you look into the distance, can, like, you won't be able to see, you know, travelers. Whereas in daytime, you'll be able to see them riding, riding you know, riding past. But at night, it's practically impossible. Okay, so we should be we might just be halfway there. <laughs> huh. I mean, if you look at the chat, looking for fights in Maduli in about five minutes, I'm, well, I'm glad I'm not there when when it happens, because then, you know, yeah, just like a bunch of sharks that are at a, you know, on a, on a feeding frenzy, you know, if they spot, you know, something, if they spot a prey, they'll, they'll instantly 
come for come for you. Okay, so I so yeah, there's Tundrum there, so so I am sort of on the right track. But man, Fabenum is still some ways away. <laughs> but this is good. I I am absolutely enjoying this. This is the kind of scale, the world scale that we need. Because it actually gives transporters a significant role in the game. Because if if you're uh, if you're skilled, if you know how to transport things effectively and discreetly without being spotted, then you will you know your services will be highly sought after by people who who might not be as good as who might not be as, as good at doing this sort of thing. You know, let's say if um, a new, you know, like a, well, maybe even expert players, you know, veterans who are, who are good at transporting, they might seek your services as well because, you know, no, not everyone has the time to, you know, to be doing this like constantly. And given the size of the world, I think, you know, it's going to, you know, it's going to be delegated to... Oh man, <laughs> look, at the, look at this uh, ravine. This is new. It's a new change. So even if you're dealing with um, veteran players, I think... Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh. Let's take it slow. Okay. So I think this is where we got to... <laughs> Yeah, I might have to break this up into multiple episodes because I do have to go in a few minutes. So I might. So I may do this. Oh, slow down, slow down. <laughs> so I may have to break this up into a separate episode because this is a quite a long trek. So I got, I got a. You know, come down this way. So, like I was saying, you know, even bedroom players they might seek your services as well. Because I mean, if you look at this kind of distance, you know, even if they have a big army of players who oh, 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 oh <laughs> attacked by wolves. Die wolf. Okay, so that was a die wolf. All right. So <laughs> I didn't see the die wolf, but you know my horse definitely got attacked by it. Okay, so hopefully this is. Uh... Oh, so yeah. So let's say a guild. Oh, I'm still getting attacked. This is not good. Oh, all right. <laughs> Time to bolt. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. No, 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 no. Please don't. Please. Please don't stop. Please don't stop. Please. You can do this. Please. Don't stop now. Oh, it seems like they've given up. Phew. Okay. Alright, so. <laughs> we escaped. But just barely. So, you know, I think guilds might out outsource transporting especially if they're hauling large quantities of things so so it's definitely uh definitely you know there'll be job opportunities for you know haulers especially if you're good at what you do i 
Oh, and there's some ruins here too. So yeah, this patch I think adds a whole lot of, you know, interesting areas. Although I think most of it is just abandoned ruins. <laughs> Alright, I, I, um... Oh! There's a wolf. <laughs> Alright, getting chased again. No way he's safe. <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, <laughs> harder than I thought. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely think that um, you know, there'll be a, you know, a demand for this sort of thing. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. And so I've had to go just now, but I'm resuming now and so there was a 30 minute uh, 30 minute timer where my character and my pet remained in the game world and so I was very anxious to find out you know whether my character was still alive when I logged back in and thankfully my character and my pet are still alive so so it seems like it's not too bad so it's not as bad as um some people have made it out to be. And I think if you notice, if you um, bump into a tree on your horse, your horse will automatically navigate around it. You know, you won't just um, continue to run straight into it without, uh, without any sort of correction. Yeah, so <laughs> you can see how it automatically Auto corrects its course. So I'm glad I managed to test out, you know, quite a number of. Um, well, actually, I managed to, you know, just to see what the logout system is like in the wild, and so it's. So yeah, like I said, it's, in my opinion, it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. I mean, I survived, you know, I logged out, my character and my pet stayed in the game for 30 minutes and when I log back in, I'm still here. So it's, but I don't know <laughs> when the game gets released and when there's like a, you know, 10,000 plus players running around, <laughs> it might be a whole different story. So. So there you go. Yeah, the the uh, I guess the usefulness of me showing you my journey is also to show you where dangerous wildlife are located. So that if you if you do need to make the trek, like like what I'm doing, then uh, you know at least you'll know what to expect. You know, in different areas of the game world.
<laughs> there. So I'm just showing you my uh, Kuprum stack. So yeah, the uh, wildlife is not not safe anymore. It's not like uh, back, you know, several patches back where the um, where there aren't any sort of hostile wildlife. Uh, it's a, it's a very different story now. There's now cougars and dire wolves and wolves and bandits and. Oh, there we go, that's Fabenum Tower. So, so if I do have to end the video prematurely, then, you know, I, <laughs> at least I know, at least I've um, achieved my, you know, more or less achieved my, uh, my goal of reaching, you know, finding out how to get to Fabenum from Maduli. Even though if, uh, I, I might not uh, reach it successfully, but you know, at least I sort of know where it is. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you look at the, um, you look at how big this world is and it's just, yeah, it definitely changes everything. So, you know, I really do commend SV and I do admire And I do have my SV for, you know, having the the courage to do what they want to do at the risk of um, upsetting, you know, certain, uh, you know, upsetting some people, you know, that they still, well, <laughs> that they still stuck to what they want to do and so you just cross this bridge, I think, and oh, I'm, this is my, I'm learning as I go as well. So, you know, oh, okay. Uh, we need to cross this properly so that you don't, uh, uh, I don't know if you, if you walk across on that empty area, you fall into the water, possibly, you know, you might, I mean, this is not a, casual game um, by any means this is definitely not a casual game
Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so you do have to. Uh, Okay, so I've more or less, yep, so I've completed my journey. So, just have to reach the front gates, which I think is here. And, oh yes, and I do remember reading in one of the patch notes, uh, Babenum has been revamped as well, so you can definitely see see some uh, improvements there, uh, some changes. Syndrome Elite Guard, okay. So, <laughs> all right, so, oh, okay. So I've arrived and so let's just take a, let's just head over to the central market square. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Alright, so let me just... Um... Okay, head to my bank. Oh, and there's hardly anyone. There's no one in favor of them. Okay, there is... Whoa. Okay, I think that's a die wolf. <laughs> Let me just have a good look at that. Well, that is a beastly, <laughs> very beastly. Okay, oh, and it's in my horse's bag. Okay, so job's done. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> I know this has been a rather long video, but thank you for thank you for sticking with me for the whole. Uh, if you watched to the end, then uh, thank you for for sticking with me for this long. So. Uh, Looking forward to making more videos of Mortal Kombat Online 2, especially when the game goes into early access. That's when Persistence uh, Beta arrives as well. So, yeah, so thank you for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. This is Fun Gaming Connoisseur. If you could please uh, leave a like and comment, uh, share this video, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Uh, take care and have a good day.